that game got me so agitated. I shall return in a couple of minutes. Uh, wait, are you heading to a break screen? No, uh, it, I leave the feed on for you. Ah, marvellous. Well, we are prepared as Jendrick runs away mid-broadcast. That game's so stressful for him. We are heading to Dragon Shire. A bit more of a standard map, not heading to a Battlefield of Eternity or for the Sky Temple, etc. We have something a little bit more normal. Uh, but that does open the setup to some interesting laning compositions that we could be having brought in for us. So... What are we going to see from the two teams? This, I believe, was an RPG map choice again. So CE will be taking first pick and first ban. Let's see what they go for. Last time they banned out Garrosh because they were a bit scared of a uh, Timeless picking that up and they wanted Phoenix first. Would they be willing to do so again or do they perhaps want to revert to their own Garrosh strategy? We shall find out. If they take the time, Kendrick falls into his own room via the bangs I am hearing. And back. Welcome back. There we go. So and yes, you have missed that we are on, bat we are on Dragonshire, and no bans have happened. I did take care of my hygiene, chat. Don't worry about it. Everything's clean. Everything's fine. Because I know that's always the first question that arises. <laughs> this broadcast and Kendrick's clean hands are brought to you by dihydrogen monoxide. You <laughs> <laughs> from Earth. Um... Oh, thanks for covering me, by the way. But that game got me so agitated, so excited, just couldn't contain myself any longer. Yeah. New dihydrogen monoxide from planet Earth now has 100% less salt than the previous bestseller. Um, as we wait to see, or the previous source, as we wait to see what the next pick for, or next ban for RPG is going to be with Hanzo already gone. Last time they banned out Genji. Sensible choice here would be to just ban out Garrosh, because seeing as C didn't ban it, it's a good chance they want it. Yeah, already. What are we going to see this time? We do not know. The Hanzo ban doesn't necessarily indicate any particular crazy shenanigans but uh what was the map by the way i missed that one uh dragon shire dragon shire big dragon town as it translates to in chinese nice all right oh, so from from english to chinese and then back to english again. <laughs> garage being denied as well i mean even if you're expecting a shenanigan draft coming in from ce right oh this is looking try hard alufal up to this point mm -hmm. for the moment for the moment see, there are plenty of other options so, what else are we going to see? From, what are we going to see from RPG to start off their draft? And how serious are they going to take it? Is the question. All righty then. What are we going to see here for RPG? Are they willing to risk another wonky draft, or are they also trying to maybe just hide the wonkiness for now and wait whether CE is willing to go that route again? Because, hmm, the variant could be a good pick once again in that case. Because you can yeah. literally hide the little forest. Oh, are we going to see a regular game texture? Is that what's going to happen so now? Far. So far, we're starting off pretty standard. Let's see if that continues, though. There's a, This could bo be both teams hiding their last bit. We will see. Okay. Varian is already here. That could indicate some madness. Let's actually try to analyze the facial expressions here on those players. We see them in the webcam in the bottom half of the screen right now. Everyone is looking pretty happy up to this point. Hmm. I am conf... So, for, like, I, I, I'm looking for... I think this is a... I think we're becoming conspiracy theorists. We're looking for hints at stuff that isn't, isn't there. We're like Roman um, emperors who see threats in every <laughs> angle, in every corner. We're like Leoric at the latter part of his actual <laughs> life as opposed to his unlife. All right. One less traitor. <laughs> One <laughs> less hint. For all of you who just tuned see. in, by the way, uh, CE versus RPG is our current series. Uh, and the outcome of this match does not have an impact on the overall standing. So both teams decided to just have a little bit of fun in game number one. They took us to Braxis Holdout and uh, basically unleashed the Chogal, the Windblade variant. And it was a very close match, actually, given the... Um, many shenanigans that we had to face. And now on our second map on Dragonshire, things are starting to look a little look a little bit norm more normal. Sorry, uh, that was a hard sentence for me to do. And uh, in the next series, by the way, our final one of the day, we're definitely guaranteed in seeing some uh, regular try-hard drafts because between SPT yeah. and beyond the game, which is going to happen right after this one, 
Uh, everything's on the line, basically, for SPT if they want to maintain that second spot. Correct. If they lose, then they will be behind the one, moving into the last day. Uh, if they go 1-1, one, one, then they will have to play a tiebreaker versus yeah. the one to decide who goes into the last day in that second place. And of course, if they lose, if they win, then they will go in second place. So they want that too. Right? They really want that because that means potentially just only playing one series, one best of five next week to guarantee themselves the ticket to mid-season brawl. If they end up losing to Beyond the Game, they're going to have to play two series against the one yeah. and against Beyond the Game. It's basically going to re be a rematch. Exactly. So, RPG. Very slow draft as we move into the latter stages, uh, latter stages for these two teams. Junkrat already on the board. Wouldn't be so bad to see maybe a Johanna or some other kind of hard tank, especially with ATC removed. There she is. And a Zeratul coming in. So RPG drafting very standard for the moment. For the moment, we never know what's going to come after. So for now, indeed, actually, this is... Oh, there oh, we someone go. called j -Hal right now. On it. <laughs> on it. <laughs> No, um, yeah, cool. We will link J Hal this draft after uh, afterwards. Hang on, I will actually. I'm actually just gonna link him the stream like right now and just tweet at him. He's probably asleep. He's probably sleeping and uh, napping right now. Very peacefully, unless I can actually see J Hal like lightning bolt out of his bed because he just had an epiphany in his sleep. Someone somewhere in the world picked Butcher in a competitive environment. I need to go watch this. Well, hang on. I am literally just sending the tweet, paging at... Paging J Dr. Jhow. <laughs> paging at Jhow. Dot, dot, dot. Butcher. <laughs> 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 that, that, that's all. Tweeted. All uh, right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are in for a very <laughs> special <laughs> treat. It is going to be the Butcher making his first appearance... I think ever For in a ACC time. China. It's not ever, but it's the first time in a very Are you long sure? time. Very first season we had it uh, played by uh, Eastar for fun. Oh, okay, um, so it was another fun game. I got you. Yeah, but you know who's? Well, I guess it's pretty good against Butcher. It's Medivh, so I think RPG yeah. uh, found a really nice counter, a really nice remedy to deal with that aggression. Uh, of course, they're trying to go for a taunt variant this time. The chances of going uh, Colossus or Wind Blades are very limited. Of course, Varian wants to lock a target down with Taunt. Underneath comes the Stuka of Silence and then the Minigun Butcher Burst. Uh, it's going to be glorious. Well then, it is about time to find out if RPG can claim a single point and attempt to bring themselves back into this... Uh, not into the series. Once again, this match has no effect on the standings, but it's definitely for honor. Last time they played, RPG did go 1 1 versus CE. Let's see if they can do so again against this Butcher Draft. As on the left hand side, it is Chal Eng. Playing for them, it is a Lufal on Genji, Wind on Varian, 365 on Stukov, KTY on Tychus, and Zuyu is playing the Butcher. Their opponents currently down 0 to 1. They just fell and succumbed to the might of Chogal. It is RPG, the rocket propelled grenades with Chicken playing Junkrat, MJ on that Malfurion and this time Sa is playing Zeratul, C in the main tank on Johanna, and Timeless, the mastermind himself, this time on the Medivh. As we load in, I don't know any of the Butcher talents. It's going to take me a little <laughs> bit to remember them. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Of we don't even as well. Like, who knows the Butcher talents except for J-How? We don't know them off by heart. Like, level one is Invigoration. I know that. That is the extra cooldown reduction if you hit a hero with your Q. It's extra crowd control. It's just the safer thing. Exactly. It gives a little bit of mana. It gives a little bit of cooldown reduction. Uh, pretty useful to make Butcher a little uh, stronger and self-sustaining of a laner. And here comes the mighty slow. The Roos are here to save Chicken. And he escapes thanks to the double support of Timeless and MJ. Lufal chases Saar all the way away here. It's kind of still weird not seeing Chicken on that Zeratul. But True. that is the role swap they are set with now. As we finally head into a more standard lane setup, Butcher looks like he's going to have the solo lane up in the top lane, but Genji is prepared for the follow-up. Of course, uh, Butcher is going to struggle a little bit against the Junkrat. He should normally always stay out of harm's way. Um, not really giving Butcher any life sustain with the Butcher's brand, of course, uh, being too far to be applied. Now, let's see. Are we going to see um, Medivh ganking with the portals? 
but look at Loophole, he's trying to turn things around against his Overwatch colleague Chicken on the Junkrat. Chicken survives though, and this is good news. Wind is going to be found by Sahu, who just drops a little bit of poke damage, all he's really here for, and to clear out the lane. Yeah, Butcher, of course, if he's committed to dealing with those mercenary camps, he won't be able to farm a little bit of meat, and getting early kills is probably of utmost importance here for Z right now, because heroes grant more meat, and if Butcher stacks that up very handsomely, he's going to be a late night powerhouse. But speaking of Butcher, he is gone, he is no more an RPG. They take this mercenary camp, they steal it away with full confidence. Nice little kill there, nice use of the portals with the advantage they have. By the way, uh, the cooldown reduction on the Blink falls there at all, so we could in theory see the Might of Nerezim. That could be quite fun. I would like to make the point though that if you make it to level 20, the game is over. Because upgraded land to the slaughter plus growing growing oh. infestation lurking arm oh. i mean it double you're already silenced but the amount of damage output you can get from that will just probably end the game this is where butcher decides to go burn his blast i mean he could he at could this point, but he would get easily force of will and be very sad <laughs> yeah. so that would potentially be quite imagine how, much, how much return damage that would be a fully shielded team thanks to circle of protection by medivh oh, and the furnace blast so exploding much. onto butcher the butcher would die he is not <laughs> the tankiest of assassins as is so he would be completely taken out double channel currently in favor of ce here standard taunt for a uh, varian uh, vigorous reuptake Coming in for the Stukov, that burst healing. Very mm -hmm. smart move here. Want to keep your Butcher alive. Zeratul drops low. He's gone for that extra little crit damage. Uh, I believe it is the extra damage by hitting some of the abilities, I believe. In the meantime, Zuyu is holding his position in the top lane. Keeping that top shrine under control against C. And C, of course, is uh, of course the, one of the prime counters to Butcher as well. Like, the blinds are going to cripple him uh, so much. Zuya, I'm not even sure if he saw the Zeratul here. In the meantime, Wind already securing the kill onto Malfoon and just barely not making it through the channel in the middle. So the first Dragonite still has to be delayed for a little longer. Butcher cancels the charge. Surprise a Lufal looking for the damage on Tsar, but not enough for an immediate kill. Good deflect just blocks the W from Zeratul as Tsar is forced back. Yeah, I'm a little surprised actually that Johanna didn't go for the extended blind duration at level 4, which is sometime, sometimes a talent where uh, we see there with every basic attack on a shield flare target. You will, <clears throat> excuse me, extend the time of the blind a little bit longer. Timeless, the one actually ran out. He needs to be very careful if he doesn't want to lose his stacks. He stays alive, keeping the stacks going, and that is important here. As we see Saar blinking away as well. Very close to another kill. Which, by the way, increased range. The Flail Axe increasing the range of his hamstring. And level 4, Insatiable Blade. Oh. As he tries to get Insatiable, but cannot catch up to Medivh. As the Dracodite picked up by Varian. But yeah, Insatiable Blade means when he is facing the branded enemy, his movement speed is increased by 25%. None shall escape the Butcher. Exactly. Everyone shall provide that need today. He almost walked into the lurking arm today. Saw this with a really nice escape round, managing to stay alive. In the meantime, though, all that distraction was well used by Varian, piloting the Dragon Knight and destroying two towers. Now shuffling over to the bottom lane. They're just trying to extend their lead even further. Um, and Butcher, of course, don't forget about this. Like, the longer he is left unattended, the longer he faces no enemy opposition, the more he can farm. He oftentimes plays like a Nazebo, right? You want to rotate from lane to lane, and instead of just farming minions, you just want to collect the meat. And that's exactly what Juyu is doing right now. Going from top to mid, and from mid to top. So much XP is just being gathered by CE here. They're already a full level ahead. They're looking for more. Dragonite finally popped, but... The advantage they have already gathered is so big. Zuyu getting slowly closed in on, but 365 yeah. is here to protect. At this point, I would actually like to see a short overview of how many meat stacks Butcher was able to achieve and that would like at this point. But I'm pretty sure that maybe at level 10, we're going to see exactly that. Of course, we also get a quest notifier once that has been completed. Yeah, also, a big old golden axe. So to make it very clear. Good force will onto Saar, but he goes back in straight into the silence. 365, lovely positioning, making it a one for one trade. All right, level 10 Tetris getting closer and closer for CE. Are we going to see the lamp to the slaughter? And as you proclaimed, you know, at level 20 with a little bit of AoE, wombo combo burst potential. Plus now. an Odin. Uh, yeah, <laughs> for plus an Odin. There, big red button. 
There it is. There the it lamb is. To the, the lamb to the slaughter. And of course, Odin, massive shove. Kind of interesting. I, I personally really do like the idea of using a flaming swipe on someone in the lamb to the slaughter for the sake of hilarity. Yeah. Uh, shield wall and dragon blade for good. It goes rude. Zuyu once again seems to be the focus target. Johanna cannot use the portal. It would have actually uh, headed into the wrong direction there because Medivh had to use it earlier to get to safety himself. I actually like the Master Shot Tetra because I think with Flaming Swipe there would have been too much potential misplay um, if you knock everyone away from the Lamp to the Slaughter that could have been uh, pretty detrimental. I mean, they're pulled back in. I just pulled it seven. Uh, just seeing the ping back in. Yeah, A7, not bad by Butcher here. Getting there. Yeah, of course, there weren't really a lot of hero kills that Butcher was part of. As you can see, only two kills on either side. So if there had been a bloodier early mid-game, Butcher, of course, would have had a bigger chance of actually collecting more meat. And that's actually sometimes uh, something you want to avoid. Like, early fights against Butcher can, of course, be very rewarding because you can kill Butcher, but if you end up being killed yourself, while well, Juju is actually in a lot of trouble, it doesn't survive that one. Um, yeah, you end up so much meat that you can oftentimes face a mid-game Butcher that is single-handedly wrecking your life. Uh, Varian, or gets knocked over a wall there, good. but able to fall pretty nicely here. But yeah, you make an excellent point here. With the Polybomb as well, Mice of the Nerezim for first damage, RPG equipping themselves for countering here. Pretty good, Ooh. massive shove just in case Zeratul, but Zeratul is already gone. Yeah, baiting out those massive shoves, of course, always a nice thing to do, but keep in mind that the cooldown of this heroic ability is rather low, so it should be back in the next major engagement. Medivh hovers around. C takes a little bit of damage. Luke will just be ignored because there are bigger fish to fry. In this case, it purges. Eric will try to blink away. Lamb to the slaughter. Lands it. Tool is gonna die. As the, as the Dragon Blade does even more. more damage. There's a double reset. And he gets our lovely job there by CE. And uh, that was a lot of meat for Butcher to be collected. And mm. that, of course, makes him a very, very happy man. Now with the Dragon Knight on top, is Timeless even trying to commit? He almost tried to drop once. He's gonna pay for it though. No, the portal is too good. Not enough team members available for a CE to punish that reckless behavior. Butcher uh, continuing with his Q-based build, the brutal strikes, meaning that his next three basic attacks after he lands a hamstring do 15% extra damage, mm -hmm. extra burst there. So it's Q into uh, it's E into Q into three auto attacks and for three to death. Explosions everywhere. We see concussion mines, we see dragon puns, and this is a very chaotic battle. Zhuyu, once again, is being chased <laughs> down by multiple members of RPG. They must not die here. That would be even more stacking. Zhuyu actually lifts through the Zeratul attack, and he ends up falling after all. Zeratul outplays it. Jukes galore here, but he's still getting focused from multiple angles. Wind's positioning is gorgeous here to fully control that fight and give Zeratul nowhere to go. Zeratul's down, that makes, and so is Medivh. That makes it a two for one in favor of CE. Medivh, though, he did stack his uh, Arcane Rift already. Yeah, that's nice. So no cooldown reset, or no stack reset here for good old Medivh. And now Stuka 365. I think he overstayed his welcome here. The Dragon Knight is about to expire. He's actually punting back in there. Can he survive this? Stukov has no real escape mechanism, but also RPG is not really here to turn things around. And instead, it is going to be C who has to take the bitter taste of a rip tire. <laughs> T.Y. just runs at it, pops the Neo Steel plating yeah. and just doesn't care. Just eats the shot and just stares down Junkrat as they move in to steal their mercenary camp. Butcher sitting at a juicy 122. We're getting there, guys. We're slowly but surely approaching the magical number. He's, get it. He's almost at the full stacks where he gets that glorious golden axe. They focus in. Zeratul finishes level one from the shadows, I think that is. No, that's a jump. That's a yeah, the talent. No, 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 that's a talent. So they recall that reduction on his blink as he moves back. Butcher moving forward to Johanna, but she has to but the unstoppable back to her iron skin. But now she is in the lamp to the slaughter. And she will get taken out. But the good polybomb, shield wall, keeps wind alive, and Sar gets deleted. Yeah. Varian is like, you are not the only one who can protect themselves. I shall show you what true power is. And uh, Medivh basically tasting a bit of his own medicine there. 
uh, baiting his teammates into engaging on the variant, and who is so close to dying, but beautiful carry there. Good shield wall by Wind, healing himself up with a victory rush as well. And the most important thing about this is, Zhu Yu on the Butcher, he's still untouched. He's sitting at almost full mana, full HP there as well. That was a glorious team fight for us. He a really important one to maybe take this game number two as well. Yes, yeah, he looking at more dominant with a Butcher composition yeah. than with a Cho'Gal composition. Yes. I know which one's more meta, or at least which one has been used or in meta, and I did not expect it to go this way round. Enraged, that's an old-fashioned talent on the Butcher, I know that one. The extra da uh if he's missing 50% of his maximum health, then he becomes enraged for 10 seconds. 40% attack speed, 15 mm. armor. Basically, it's the last resort for Butcher of, oh, I'm going to die, turn around, murder everything. Yeah. However, this is not a permanent state. Of course, this effect has a cooldown window as well. So Butcher is not always going to enrage whenever he drops below 50%. What is the cooldown? I think it's like 30, 25, uh, something along those lines. Don't know, actually. 25 seconds. There we go. That wasn't too bad. All right. So Varian, of course, going with additional protection here, by the way, as well. Going for the Banner of Iron Forge. In the meantime, Alufal is trying to oh go my. all in. Onto the Junkrat Dragon Blade to safety. Now, is he gonna make it even? He saw the Medivh portal go down. Is he gonna have a swift strike? I don't think so. Yeah, he didn't deflect in time. He uh, got hit by the tire and he will get taken out. In the meantime, though, the Dragonite is going to kill mid, or at least most of it. Yeah, that is going to be a dead gate and a dead tower, that's for sure. Question is, how fast are RPG able to rotate here and keep this Dragonite in check? Keep in mind, the longer the game goes, the bigger the that's scaling is going blade. to be. Yeah, so, so, nice see, Star is just like, oh, you want to pump me away? Mortal <laughs> Blade, I'm a Zeratul. Oh, nice! Just... Mortal, timeless, flashy blade. They're just toying with that Dragon right now, but look in the meantime, the bottom lane, of course, that keep had been destroyed earlier. Mercenaries Star. already knocking on the front door, and here it comes, a fully stacked Butcher. The Golden Axe is now his. He is all shiny and stuff, and does huge amounts of damage now. This is going to be scary. Level 20 is very slowly approaching the CES. Level 16 is just about to be hit uh -oh. by RPG. Oh, hand delivered, but Vorpal Blade again. Saw, like you said, toying with this dragon type. Yeah, it's actually insane, like how much time they bought with just, uh, you know, baiting the Dragonite into punting over and over again just to escape with a deep portal or, of course, the Zeratul Blinks. Polybomb. Spreads a little bit there, but Wind and Zuyu both tanking through pretty well. Good portals, keeping everyone from RPG alive. They're on even talents. This could be their best chance to try and make some kind of turnaround here. Yeah, Butcher was actually scouting the perimeter to be uh, on the lookout here for any Zeratul flanks. But they need to make something happen here. They do not have the big red button on Odin just yet, so his time in that mighty machine is going to be limited. Butcher just starting the mercenary camp because Zeratul has yet to wrap around and revealed himself in mid lane so he knows he doesn't have to guard the flank anymore. Picks up that sea giant camp with some pressure on the bot lane and they found a Zar! Good charge for some will but no lap to the slaughter. Just too slow with it. You can cast that while in your, your uh, Rufus Onslaught there. So it yep. might have been better to actually it a lot earlier. Win put in with the concussion bite but tanking through. Tanking through, Timeless is holding his team together there on that mid-deaf here with clutch portals and strong shields. They deny the Butcher value up to this point. Can they get more? Look at that wave, by the way. Two Siege Shines and three Catapults. That is a serious threat that RPG has to respect. Taunt is good. Moving on to Junk Gravity. He comes to mind himself away. C putting on the damage. Win. Putting on the pressure, Asar. Now plays a loop a little bit there, but the health bar of Zara is just so low. Massive jump, doesn't land, teleporting away. Dragon Blade used very early, not gonna get much value at all here. There's the Polybomb even, looking for the kill, but the root doesn't land. Looks like the core is going to be able to hold up to this point. No shields were destroyed, and as such, a nice hold by RPG up to this point. And now I think it's time for what Tetra, um, you know, suggested earlier, the level 20 is going to get closer Ooh, yes. and closer. And that, of course, could mean that at level 20, we're going to see the Slaughterhouse come into effect. The upgraded lamp yeah. to the Slaughter Tetra is going to affect everyone in its casting range. That's what they want to do. Group everyone up for that Dragon Blade and just murder them. Azuyu grabs a Dragon Dragon Knight. Uh, okay. Chicken missed his grenades. So cool. Free Dragon Knight. But the other option, of course, uh, if they don't go for Sword of House, pops the Storm so they can go for the hard engage that way. But still, we see them moving in with the Dragonite. They could just go for core here and not even get level 20. Yeah, but we're not even 
Reptile the butcher at this point is like screaming. Out. We're 20 in. We're at 20. Reptile coming. Oh. Does explode, but near steel plating plus shield wall means it does nothing. Dragonite's going for the core. Um, cool. I, I guess it's game over because no one's dealing with this. But like literally, <laughs> no one is defending. Fight. They're just going to end the game. They've yeah. managed to kill off uh, D here. MJ's the only one back. Yeah, that's it. Just no defense. GG. Zuri Zuri actually cancel the match. The all in. I get ice box though. There's that to the slaughter. He wants a kill. He wants that Mount Fury again. MJ, but MJ makes it back to base. Core will go <laughs> down, and that is GG. Game number two and the series goes over to your first seed heading into the playoff in HCC China, CE. Fantastic. Zhuya really wanted to have a little bit more playtime on that Butcher. He <laughs> didn't really see the fact or the, the use of the Dragonite here, manually canceling it only to get another uh, engage onto Malfrain. But he was uh, safe for now. And the RPG, unfortunately, although they were trying their hardest in that game number two with a pretty decent and uh, pretty serious looking draft, they were not able to uh, withstand the onslaught of the Butcher. And it is now confirmed, Tetra, that Butcher 100% win rate in 2018. Butcher better than Varian. Butcher better than... Hey, hey, slow down, okay? Butcher don't have to, better don't than... have to overdo it. Don't have to overdo it. We, we can literally go all day listing things that Butcher <laughs> is now better than in HGC China. If you just go over that. But honestly, Butcher was not impactful to that win, I will say. It was cool. It works at times, but... It was outplayed several times. They were just were able to manage it and not get out. The rest of the team did such a good job. All right. That was quite the pleasure to watch. And I want Zhuyu to become the MVP because we have always longed for a Butcher to become MVP. If that happens right now, we're going to take a screenshot and send it over to Jaehao. And when he, when he <laughs> wakes up, he's like, first of all, checking the VOD. And then he's also checking the picture. And he's like, I knew it. I knew it all along. Butcher had a place <laughs> in the competitive scene. I told you! I told you! <laughs> so many times! People were laughing at me. Yeah, but honestly, honestly someone actually brings up a thing. For starters, uh, for starters chat, C-E is Chal Eng, is what it stands for. True. But yeah, th there was a way too much focus from RPG on countering the Butcher, mm -hmm. which is fair, because if they hadn't, then Butcher would have actually been absolutely devastating. But the fact is, because of that, C just won the game. They just rotated appropriately. I'm really upset we didn't get to level 20, though. I'm kind of yeah. sad. Um, but yeah, uh, sometimes Butcher brings that Illidan factor, I want to call it, right? Illidan, yeah. probably uh, the prime example of how one hero can sometimes lure and bait the enemy team into a false sense of security when they put so many tools, so many heroes as a straight-up counter to that, that the remaining members of that Illidan or Butcher team are basically just going to clean up house here. And now we're going to take a look at the summary here for the final game of this series. 10 to 6, RPG was able to fight back a little bit here, but eventually they were all were overwhelmed with too many Dragonites slipping through over and over again. Yes, they were, and no structures taken by RPG, just dominant fashion by CE. It's level 19 there, but they almost hit level 20 by the end of it, so it shows how far, how far ahead they were. And with CE Challenge taking the second game, they now have a solid five point lead over the rest of the party with the only team that could even get within three points of them, SBT playing next. And SBT would have to 2-0 to get within three points of RPG. Yeah. And that's exactly what they